and Danae, I'd love to throw to you the question of why it's so important for members of different church congregations to be involved actively in public outreach. I, we've been growing our internships each year more and more. And so why is it necessary to get um, members of different church congregations involved uh, when we have so many interns on the go? Hopefully you were able to hear that. Sorry, was that question for me? That, that question was for you, Danae. Apologies. Yeah, to reiterate, <laughs> uh, with growing internships, why is it so important to still be engaging more and more um, members of, of different church congregations and church bodies? Yeah, so what I learned from my internship last year and what I continue to learn as I witness what's happening in my hometown and throughout Canada is that babies... 300 a day are losing their lives and just with our activism teams that go out every summer during the internships it's awesome and we save lives community groups and church outreach is so important because we'll be able to reach so many more people and save so many more lives well exactly i, I think it's so important that we don't simply rely on the backs of of 50 or 100 or maybe even a couple hundred interns in the coming years that if we're actually going to end abortion in Canada and make it unthinkable, we're going to need literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of people um, reaching out to people within their spheres of influence every week. Um, and Michael, I know that you've done um, some leadership already of the church video series in a couple of different parishes in Vancouver. And, and I'd be curious, you've had a, a very good um, experience, I believe, and maybe you can share a little bit about your experience leading the series, but I'd also be curious as to what you would say to a priest or pastor or a religious leader who is wondering about leading this kind of series or engaging in some pro-life outreach uh, within their church congregation. Yeah, um, so like Cam said, my experience with <clears throat> leading the series has been pretty positive overall, but I've read it so far um, three, well, not let it as in just me, but um, I've been help, helping lead it along with other um, staff or interns on three different occasions, uh, two different churches, and then also in a high school in Chilliwack. Uh, and each, each of those times, um, I found that the participants were for the most part really engaged. They were really interested. They were asking a lot of questions. The discussions uh, went on like way longer than we expected them to, which is really good. Um, and people just overall left the series feeling more equipped and more like they could discuss this with the people in their lives. And we even got people from that series commit to regular activism and, and got some uh, regular participants in activism from that, which has been amazing. Uh, so what I would say to uh, pastors and church leaders who are considering this series or considering just um, bringing the pro-life topic up more in their sermons and making it more a part of their church life, I would say, I would say do it. Like it's, as Christians, it's so crucial that we're a forefront voice on abortion. And it's crucial that we're equipping our congregations to get more involved. It's a, crucial that we're um, teaching, you know, the Christians all across Canada and around the world um, about this injustice, not only so that they uh, don't do it themselves, but so that they're willing to be a voice for the voiceless and stand up for the preborn children who are, like Denise said, are losing their lives by the hundreds every single day. Boom. Well, I, I think that that's so important. And not only that, but tying that into what Jonathan had talked about earlier, and I know a few other speakers have mentioned it about how Christians have been so involved in um, transforming society over the last 2,000 years sort of thing, and especially in the last couple hundred years, that there have been so many different injustices that um, Christians have confronted and through the courage of, of church leaders um, really inspired the congregations to make a, a profound difference. And I wonder about throwing the same question to Olivia, actually, that I know that last summer when Olivia was in Calgary working with us in the internship, um, the church congregation that she was attending, I believe it may have even been the same as Danae, um, was actually getting more and more interested in 
um, in bringing in a pro-life speaker and in getting involved in it. Um, if memory serves correct, it was something that was very new to their church community. And, and so I wonder, Olivia, if you could comment similarly on that question of engaging churches, especially churches that haven't really waded into the waters of pro-life outreach before, um, what, can a, what can a pastor do to um, learn about the issue and, and what would you say to them in inviting them into um, a more active role in boots on the ground? Yeah, that's a great question. I would definitely encourage pastors to look into the church study series that CCBR has. It's a great opportunity to equip your congregation or your parish um, into being a voice for voiceless. And we're commanded throughout scripture to hold back those being taken to the slaughter, that what we do or don't do to the least of Christ's brothers, we ultimately do or don't do to him. And so it's a great opportunity to serve um, the preborn children and to serve God ultimately. Well, I, I think that's bang on. And and so that's kind of the, the first major area that we're gonna be focusing with the community engagement interns this year. And I'm super excited about it. We have the goal of engaging 1,000 people in these video series. And, and I'd love to share a little bit about that video series. Kena, I don't know if you'd be able to show um, the promo video for that video series. We're looking to have 1,000 people join it. Um, over this summer, we have a sign-up form on our website. We're constantly running courses. And these three wonderful individuals will be leading many of those courses over the next four months. Hi, I'm Micah Rosenau, and I want to invite you to bring our new pro-life study series to your church or community to equip your community to respond to abortion in a loving, compassionate, and effective way. At the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, we've developed simple arguments and simple conversational strategies that we can use to reach out to people. And see together how we can apply them to our culture today to save lives, to change hearts, and to change minds. Contact us today. Boom. So I, I am so encouraged and excited about this series. Uh, my, my colleague, Rachel Miklat, has spent so much time developing it and helping people um, get prepared for it. And these three wonderful interns are going to be um, rolling it out to literally 1,000 people this summer. And so I'm super excited for that. And that's, that's kind of the one main um, focus. But we've got a secondary focus as well that we're going to be focusing on through this internship. And that's with regards to community outreach. I know that uh, Michael and Danae particularly have been involved in trying to build up their community groups that are often tied in some ways to the churches that they're working with. But we have community groups across the country that are led by volunteers that do CCBR activism regularly. And we're really excited during this time of, of, of lockdown to be able to take advantage of the time to really re-engage a lot of people in the conversation about abortion. Many of these community groups have hundreds of people on their mailing list, and yet many of those people have either drifted off, um, maybe they haven't participated in activism for a couple months or maybe even a couple of years. And, and I'd love to throw to Danae. I know that Danae has been doing a lot of training workshops in her hometown, and, and maybe a bit of a question about why it's so important to engage um, community members, regardless of their faith background. Certainly churches are, are a key point for us to be engaging people, but why is it important to have a, a very, very large and very active um, team of volunteers and not just a core group of four or five people who are willing to go out once a week or a couple times a week? Yeah, so in my hometown, actually, this is the day that abortions are performed. So the surgical abortions are performed today. So even as I speak, I'm sure that babies are dying so close to me. If we have people equipped with the tools they need to go out in our communities, we can prevent this. And I, so I, I have so much hope because we see so much passion in, in the young people and, and old generations. Um, today and this is why uh, I feel so passionate about reaching our communities because I think we can make a difference and for those of uh, who have been involved before that is so wonderful and I would just encourage you to 
get involved again because you're you make a difference every individual makes a huge huge difference exactly and and i think in a lot of ways i i often think about it in that this isn't a sprint this isn't necessarily a relay where we're looking to pass off the baton and certainly we want to make things manageable um and and there have been so many incredible heroes across the country who've been actively volunteering for for several years maybe even several decades and and they're ready for the next generation to come in i think it's so valuable to have people from different walks of life and different demographics and different experiences out there sharing their experience and sharing their um their time with the people that are passing by on street corners and doing the door knocking neighborhood by neighborhood because everyone is going to have a slightly different approach to um kind of engaging people in the public about this issue and and we need people from different backgrounds it, it's not just um the the four people who are on on reading break or on summer break from school, we need everybody involved. And maybe Michael, I know that you've been managing volunteers in Vancouver for quite a while. Um, I'm sure that you're you're seeing a lot of familiar faces, and maybe there's some people that you haven't seen for a little bit. And I don't necessarily want to want you to call out the people that you haven't seen for a little bit. But what would you say, I suppose, to somebody who maybe they've taken a, a couple months away, or maybe it's been a couple of years, and maybe they're a little bit nervous and, and feel like they're going to be too rusty be able to come back and make a difference what would you say to somebody like that it's a really good question i would say like i i know the fear and i know the hesitation about it because i remember when i first did my internship and even when i even doing activism still today uh it's it's nerve-wracking like it's not something i always feel super you know pleasant about doing but um at the same time I keep coming back because I know that it works. I know that it actually does change minds and hearts. And I think even if you don't feel like you're the most equipped person, I don't think anyone on CSPR was necessarily the uh, the most like, you know, they never really felt like going into this, you know, like I'm the best person to do this. I think we're all, it's something that you get used to, I, I think. And I think it's something we have to um, kind of take a risk and, jump into even if we're scared because we're ultimately never going to feel totally ready to do it. But for the sake of the babies that are dying by the hundreds every day, um, I think it's so, it's so worth our time and it's so worth the risk of, um, uh, you know, putting ourselves on the line. And even if you, um, yeah, even if you're kind of nervous about it, like um, go to your nearest person who runs activism or who, um, or come to a CCR staff member, anyone who you can talk to to get equipped and trained because um, once you have training, then it, it just goes so much more smoothly and you feel so much more ready to to do it. Bingo. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there that, that it certainly is going to take a, a particular degree of courage to get back out there to shake off that rust. Olivia, you've been involved last summer even already in doing some one-on-one -on -one trainings with people, um, new volunteers. And this year, we're going to be focusing a lot on doing this one-on-one -on -one kind of reinvigoration, re um, bringing that training back to the forefront of people's minds. And I wonder if you could share a little bit about your experience doing these one-on-one -on -one trainings with people and what somebody could look forward to when it comes to... Um, being reminded of some of these things that maybe they got trained a couple years ago um, and maybe they've kind of forgotten a few of these things. Can you share a little bit about what it, um, the value of having one-on-one -on -one training to get back involved, get back um, sharpened and prepared to do activism? Yeah, that's a great question. It, the rest definitely, definitely piles on after a while. I know even I, after a week or a month away from activism, I have to kind of go through it again in my head. So to do, another one-on-one -on -one training and kind of um, get your apologetics sharpened is really helpful and really boosts your confidence as well. Boom, it, exactly. And and that's something that our goal is. So we're, we're looking to reach out to as many different um, against abortion groups. I, I know there's many people represented on here, whether from Niagara or Windsor or Lethbridge or, or volunteers in Calgary, Winnipeg, or all the way across the country. And we're looking forward to um, working our way through those membership lists and trying to re-engage a lot of those members who maybe have taken a little bit of time away. And, and that's why it's so important for um, 
people like you, people who are engaged in CCPR, whether in an activism capacity or whether in a financial support capacity to enable the programs that CCPR is doing right now. Today, as so many people have mentioned before me, is Giving Tuesday now um, to support initiatives like what we've got right now, engaging the church body um, to engage people who um, have that pro-life conviction already, but maybe have never been engaged in it meeting them with the language that they're comfortable with, engaging them through their faith and helping them and inviting them into um, joining our activism teams across Canada. Our goal, like I said, is to get a thousand people to do our video series and get at least 250 of them to commit to at least joining for one public activism, making 250 new public activists across the country. We'd certainly love to have even more of those thousand people um, join for activism. Not only that, but also these communities, how important it is to re-engage people who have been involved before and, and have simply, um, whether faded away because of new responsibilities on their plate. And it's people like Olivia, Michael, and Danae who are going to be doing this to make sure that um, we get as many people as possible prepared to have meaningful, compelling conversations to show the truth about abortion as soon as we're able to in the different um, regions and, and cities that people are active in. Um, I, I'm so excited to work with these three people. They're incredible advocates for life. They've all done internships before. They're excited to be back. I know that we're at 11 o'clock right now. I don't know if we got a nip off necessarily immediately, but I, I'd love if anyone wants to throw in a, a closing remark on why they're excited about this summer. Why are you excited to be doing this program in particular? Um, because I'm excited. I've been excited ever since we kind of drafted this idea um, six months ago, eight months ago, to bring people back to really engage more and more people, build our numbers by the hundreds this year. And so I, I don't know if any of you want to jump in on that, but why this year in particular you're excited to be participating in this program? Yeah, it was amazing last year seeing how in just one hour of activism, how many minds are changed and shifted on abortion. And if we can multiply that and equip more people to to articulate the pro-life worldview, the more boots we have on the ground, the more conversations will happen and then the more minds will be changed and ultimately the more lives will be saved. Well, bingo. I, I think that's a great summary on that, that, that it's so good to um have more and more and more boots on the ground um and and yeah that one person can do a ton of activism can reach a ton of people um, but the value of having different people from different walks of life not only for boots on the ground during our public activism where we're showing the truth about abortion but also equipping these people so that they can have conversations at their dinner table and at their lunchroom table and so many areas like that um I, I think it's so, so valuable to have as many people as possible prepared to have these conversations because you never really know when they're going to come up. Uh, Michael or Danae, I don't know if either of you want to um, dive in on that topic as well. Yeah, um, I, I'd like just echo what Olivia said. Um, I think the, the value of this particular internship is um, not that, because with most internships, we're focus is mainly on um, ourselves doing activism or on, yeah, just activism in general. But I think what's really valuable about this is that we're sort of taking a behind the scenes approach and um, we're going to be training hopefully hundreds of people so that once this summer is done and once this pandemic is over, we're going to have this huge surge of people ready to do activism we can and before. So I think the value isn't in the immediate results we're going to get, like just from our own activism, it's gonna be, um, the results are gonna see uh, very soon um, once this pandemic is cleared and once we have hundreds more trained activists. Thank you. Danae, anything to add? Yeah, <laughs> so I would just say this is so valuable, this internship, because, well, like Michael and Olivia have said, um, we're gonna be training people and they are gonna be reaching out in their communities. So it will be a far reaching influence. And I mean, the, we do the internships for the babies and this CCBR is, we're just, um, our purpose is to save babies and to make abortion unthinkable. So that is our ultimate goal. Bingo. And, and with that, I think it, it's so exciting to be working with these three incredible young people 
who have committed significant time and energy. This isn't just a um, something that they can tick off in their life plan. You know what? I did a CCBR internship and I can move on with my life right now. Obviously, these three people are incredibly committed to the cause right now. And I'm so excited that um, you as supporters are able to meet people like this who are coming back for a second summer and building this movement so that um, we are going to make even larger steps growing forward, that obviously we have exponential growth that's necessary for us to turn the tides of this pro-abortion culture. And it's through people like this that we're able to do that, that in the span of this summer with 250 new activists um, at least, and hopefully 250 people who are already activists but have kind of faded away, we're hoping to see literally hundreds more people out on the street, changing minds, saving lives day after day. And I, I can't um, express my, my gratitude enough for those who have already generous, generously supported this um, Giving Tuesday Now campaign. Certainly want to encourage you. I'm sure that Loretta is going to jump in here in just a moment here um, and, and share a, a progress update and, and how you can get involved, how your donation can make a difference. Um, but it, it's so valuable to make sure that, that the pro-life movement isn't simply opposing abortion but that we're actually making up ground, that we're actually turning the tides of our culture. Um, Jonathan shared earlier as to um, how we're following in the footsteps of heroes. Um, Olivia, Michael, and Danae are today's heroes. They're the people who could find a much more convenient, much easier, much more acceptable job, but they are doing something that is um, going um, super well. I Maybe there's a few... Um, questions in here. Sorry, they weren't coming up live. Um, great question from Kristen Newman. Um, approximately how long is each session of the video series? Each of them contain about a 20 to 30 minute video segment from our, our top notch speakers. You saw many of them in that promo video um, being Micah, Jonathan, Devorah and Justina. The video is 20 to 30 minutes and then the discussion afterwards is usually about an hour, maybe a slightly over an hour. We're planning on having them wrapped up between an hour and two hours because there's so much to get through um, that that is so meaningful for people. And I think that um, Dana asks a really good question. Um, do you include the gospel in the training? That is um, ultimately what we will be changed, uh, what will change hearts and minds. Certainly we we draw in that biblical understanding for Christians so that they can they can relate to these themes and concepts that they're so familiar with. And in some ways, the course can be considered like a, a translation course in translating these biblical principles and the gospel message into language that will resonate with people who may not have any kind of faith background whatsoever. And so it recognizes the importance of, of the gospel um, and helps Christians bridge that gap between the language and concepts that they are very comfortable with, and yet maybe people in the culture um, are intimidated by um, a pure and, and very forthcoming gospel message. Uh, we were able to relate to them with the language of human rights, and we're able to help demonstrate these gospel principles um, that are, are acceptable to or, or easy to um, connect with, with other people. Um, Question from Alex. Yes, no, that's good. Um, yeah, certainly a pleasure to be um, drawing in there. The question from um, Maria. Let's check Maria's question. Sorry, I'm on my phone right now. Will CSPR be running crash course in the fall, depending on the pandemic situation? That is definitely our goal. Our goal is certainly, I mean, we can't promise dates or, or locations at this point, unfortunately. Um, but our goal is to get people engaged in active and activism as quickly as possible. Um, these, these interns are gonna be working, getting people the basic training, and we would love to provide programs um, wherever we possibly can, as soon as we're able to, to get boots on the ground with um, professional, trained, quality leadership, so that all of these people who have become invigorated, who have become equipped, can be led in, in an activism experience as quickly as possible. So certainly, as soon as we're able to, if that's in the fall, if that's in the winter, whenever the, the public health authorities open up um, the ability for us to do so, we are we are looking to um, make these plans to get these people boots on the ground um, to change minds and save lives. 